All right, guys, I'm going to make this real quick. Uh, I did a couple of videos. One of them, War with Russia or China. The other one was about uh, effectively 2022, what we could expect, predictions, that sort of thing. I'm going to throw this out here. It's not fear-mongering. I'm just putting this out as the general subject. Prepare as if you're preparing to survive the after effects of a nuclear war. Put that at the top of your what-if list. Because at that point, if that's up here, anything else that occurs all the way down the line is going to be significantly easier to manage. And I say this not only because of the current global situation we're in with Russia and the events going on in Ukraine, but also still China. I mean, China has been storing and stocking up grain and telling their citizens to supply themselves with enough food to last for several months. You don't do that as a nation unless you know that something's going to happen where that supply is going to get cut off or you're planning on doing something that will interrupt the flow of goods and services to your people. Same thing with Russia. People are talking within those circles of they will or they won't and it's posturing. It very well may be posturing. Don't know. But I'm talking about the after effects of whatever could happen. We could see a complete cutoff of global trade, shipping, production for the overseas goods, production within our own country, trade and shipping within it, because if there's no fuel, there's no trucks and trains moving. If the farmers have a bad harvest and they're not growing anything, we're not going to get anything at the production end. If you have a, another case of swine flu or bird flu that passes through those uh, agricultural areas, that can kill off 10, 20, 30, 40 percent of the animals that they harvest for our use and again interrupts the supply flow. If there is a war, a conflict, whether we go directly in or we're indirectly involved in it, that's going to have major effects on things back here. You're going to see the cost of all your goods go up and you're going to see the availability of those goods go down. So I've always stressed three months minimum, and I still hold to that because what you don't want to be is waking up one morning and finding out that, you know, someone flipped the switch and everything has been shut down. Everything's cut off and you only have enough to get you by for a week or two. And then you're forced to now scramble out with everyone else that was not prepared to start scavenging. And yes, there may be cases where something happened and you need certain pieces of equipment or certain types of items because you ran out or yours broke, something like that. If it's a need basis, I thoroughly understand that. But if it's simply you don't have enough because you didn't feel like it, I can't help you on that one. Really don't have any sympathy. You need to be able to stay in, stay secure as best as possible for that time period. And if some major global event occurs, that's what we could be looking at. We could be looking at a complete system halt on everything for several weeks to months or even a dramatic enough slowdown that while things are still being shipped from one point to the next point it still takes longer when it gets there there's less on the shelf what is on the shelf costs two three times more than what it used to just a few weeks earlier you're going to have a higher level of tension a higher level of stress because of that you're going to have far more businesses simply shut down because they don't have enough merchandise in to supply the customers that do show up because there are far more customers than they have merchandise. And the cost of that is also gone up and it costs them a lot more. Chain stores, things like that may start to reshuffle and reprioritize what stores they send to and they may in close up down, closing up and shutting down outside stores that aren't making enough money within certain regions, which then makes where you're at might be more difficult to find stuff because all those stores keep closing up and you're searching farther and farther out to go find supplies. You're going to have to start to think about what could happen in that time period and being able to stay inside food, water, medicines, get your prescriptions filled up, get over the counter medicines, get all those things. Stocking up with certain things. I understand for people that live in apartments or small areas where they don't have a lot of space be creative really be creative it there may be a point where yes you don't want it to interfere in your daily function but you also don't want to be in a situation where you know that you're not going to be able to make it and i'm again not dooming and glooming i'm not trying to throw fear mongering out there but i really feel that because of these events that have been going on this sort of back and forth thing 
that at some point, someone, somewhere is going to hit the button. They're going to start shit off and it's going to go. And once that happens, it it's there's the clocks run out. There's not enough time at that point to begin a whole plan about what you need to do and how you need to do it. So with that being said, stick to the basics. Take it from the top end. You can plan yourself out to survive the after effects of nuclear war and work your way down. Everything else is going to be easy breezy, for lack of a better term. All right, so that's it for now, and I'll catch you guys later. Thank you.